Motor Week is made possible by TireRack.com and State Farm. Earlier, we talked about the Duesenberg, the American car that more than any other captured the fancy of the public in the 20s and 30s. If we could pick a current American car with anything close to that kind of appeal in the 80s and 90s, it would undoubtedly be the Corvette. And at vintage auto auctions of the future, the two Corvettes we're about to show you will be the ones with the highest price tags. The two we're talking about are the ZR1 and the Callaway Twin Turbo, Corvettes that outperform some of the finest exotics in the world. We managed to get these twins together last fall for a few impressions and acceleration runs at Pocono International Raceway. We'd driven the ZR1 before, but this was our first try with a production version. Starting at $59,175, the ZR1 gets all Z51 Corvette options as standard, including 13-inch front brake rotors and FX3 selective ride control. Special bodywork stretches to cover three inches more width, which comes from monster 315-35 Z-rated 17-inch tires. Of course, the real substance is under the hood. The 5.7-liter all-aluminum V8 with its twin overhead cams, sequential fuel injection, and 12, yes, 12 quarts of oil is rated at 385 horsepower. Torque output is 370 pound-feet. The engine reaches peak horsepower at 5,800 RPM, a bit high compared to what we're used to in V8s. And it pushed our car through the quarter mile in 12.9 seconds, ending at 111 miles per hour. Zero to 60 took 4.5 seconds. Chevrolet claims times that are a tenth or two faster for both measures, but either way, the result is enough force to nearly cure driver myopia. Unfortunately, we didn't get the chance to run the ZR1 at peak speed on the high bank race course. In our second day of testing, the Pennsylvania sky opened up to dampen our fun. All was not lost. We did come away impressed with the ZR1's wet weather traction. And we took the time to become better acquainted with the interior. All Corvette interiors have been redesigned for 1990. The tack and auxiliary gauges are now analog, while speed reads digitally. Generally, everything is easier to see, read, and use. The biggest problem with the ZR1 is that only 3,000 of them will be made this model year. If your dealer is fresh out of ZR1s, or if you just want something a little different, consider the Callaway Twin Turbo. Add $26,895 to the price of a standard Corvette L98, and you get special bodywork that's a bit more aggressive than that of the ZR1. And of course, a new engine. Callaway starts with the factory iron block 5.7. Then they virtually remake it from the inside out, adding two turbochargers and two intercoolers along the way. The result is 390 horsepower and an astounding 570 pound-feet of torque. Quarter mile acceleration ends up being slightly better than that of the ZR1. Our Callaway covered the quarter mile in 12.7 seconds, finishing at 114 miles per hour. Zero to 60 took 4.5 seconds, the same as the ZR1. The Callaway makes its power at very low engine revs, which will please traditional muscle car taste. It's one of those engines that gets it all over with quickly. Perhaps the best thing about the Callaway is that it comes with the blessing of Chevrolet. It can be ordered from your dealer, just like the ZR1. Unlike the ZR1, the Callaway can be had as a convertible. Both the Callaway and the ZR1 prove themselves to be every bit as competent and exciting as the exotic European cars we've taken to Pocono, including even the Ferrari Testarossa. But here's what impresses us most about the two Corvettes. For the price of one Testarossa, you can buy them both.